All right, welcome back everybody. Time to uh, get some wiring done here. I'm going to install my brand new harness. You know, I, I think Lucas always had a kind of a bad rap. I never had problems with any of their wiring. When I bought Dorothy here, believe it or not, everything worked. So, um, so I, I, I think it's probably a bad ground. Yeah, definitely a bad ground. We'll get it fixed. That little cute bundle of joy there is the wiring harness. I think I'm going to start playing with that just to see what trouble I can cause myself. Not very big, obviously, which is which is a pretty good deal. Pick this up from Rimmer Brothers. I think I told everybody about this. Got it on sale. It's from a, a company called Otter Sparks, which is in the UK. If you go to their website, uh, you can get some customization to these. You can get them to put a USB drop in there. There's a couple other things you can do, but this is... If you go to Rimmer, it's just a straight up stock harness. So I'm going to uh, start playing around with this, route this, if I can kind of figure everything out. I have not unraveled this at all. I did not mark any of the old wiring harness when I took it all apart. So this is just going to be essentially using the diagram and seeing what, uh, what tr like I said, what trouble I can cause. Most of it runs down the driver's side of the car and it swaps over to the passenger side as necessary to pick up tail lights and, and uh, turn signals and things like that, but the majority of this runs down the driver's side. All right, so what I got here is uh, the main harness. This is obviously the, the, the brunt of the electrical distribution system. Things like this, this is all the little light bulbs for the gauges, but uh, all sorts of plugs and, and fittings already on that. This heavy duty brown, this is a heavy gauge brown yellow, that's all ignition stuff, so that's either gonna go under the dash or on top of the firewall, but on the engine compartment side. So this stuff is gonna get run through the firewall or the bulkhead, got the big grommet here and then you got a little auxiliary I think that's what it's referred to as a little auxiliary wiring harness and I believe this runs front to back with all the light I know that one of the chassis ground points goes on the steering column or the, the steering box I'll show you that real quick so that brass nut that guy right there that you can kind of see coming out of the steering box that's an electrical contact point for all the chassis ground that is one of the reasons why the steering knuckle there, there's a piece of wire in there because it's insulated by rubber just to minimize transmission of road, uh, road bumps and everything through the steering column. So those nuts that are on that are rubber grommeted. Well, there's a wire internal to that that just connects both sides so that you can have a, a continuity path. That big hole right there, that's where that big grommet goes. And this hole right here, more wires come up on the, uh, the deck plate here, whatever you want to call it, on the, the bulkhead. There's a lot of uh, electrical stuff going on there. So the, uh, the starter solenoid is there. The, uh, the control box is up here for the, for the charging system. There's all sorts of business going on up there. And uh, some of the wires obviously would come through here. A lot of grommeting to do, a lot of routing to do. I'm going to try to lay that out as best as I can, kind of get it rough fit and uh, probably put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out several times until I'm sure of the layout and then I'll start uh, getting a little bit more solid. This box right here, that's the control box. That's what uh, kind of just, it's essentially the voltage regulator, but back in the day, I'll show you that. I got it over on the workbench. It's an uh, it's electromechanical thing. Pretty, uh, pretty big antique. Pretty cool though. But these stack of wires right here, a bunch of browns, you can see some of these are pretty heavy gauge. Those all go to that control box. And I know from memory that those are what come through that hole here because the control box screws into the firewall right here. So that'll be the first portion that I route is getting those wires up through there. This is those wires I was just talking about coming through the firewall there. I'm not going to put a grommets on anything until I'm sure that that's the kind of the way that I want to go. These two wires here are for the brake switch, which is right there. I'm going to plug them in, one, because it's easy, and two, because it'll give me a little bit of a, a support there for that. 
So I'll do that real quick. This uh, stuff is going to be a little difficult to film. I'm probably going to get in the way quite a bit. All right, so this big long piece here, it's got the, the uh, eyelet connectors, some heavy browns in here. So I know it's ignition based. And these guys right here for the horns, that is all going to go through that very large hole in the bottom that I showed you and start to route itself towards the, uh, the front of the car. stuff right here goes right up underneath the dash right there this little uh, this little fuse here and all this stuff is all uh, I think the flashers under here there's a voltage stable there's a couple things under here I don't remember exactly everything so I do have my old wiring harness there's two of them in there actually one from the black car and one from Dorothy so you can see identify some things there's the flasher unit the fuse box I don't think the fuse box came with this thing there's a uh, Actually, I know, I know the fuse box didn't come with this thing. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and start transferring some parts. This may help alleviate some confusion that I'm having with why the fuse box isn't lining up. It's because it's right there and not on the new harness. So there is definitely some things outside of the wiring harness that you're going to have to acquire while uh, if you decide to go with a new wiring harness. This is the flasher unit. This is a Lucas flasher. I'm almost positive this works. This here is a voltage stabilizer. If you look closely, it says Smith's Motor Accessories. So this is for the instrument gauges, the uh, the fuel, and the, uh, what else I got on there? Temperature, engine temperature that, that helps stabilize the voltage for those. This is the fuse box cover. If you look here, these appear to be original 35 amp Lucas fuses. They got a little piece of paper in them, and they got a uh, filament in there. Looks good to me. I, uh, you know, fuse is a fuse. It's just really a piece of wire. Also, if you look here, the ends are soldered, right there, right there. That's, a, that's an old design. Nobody does soldered fuses anymore. As a matter of fact, when I was uh, in the Navy, we had some fuses that had the soldered ends like that. And um, in, in a nuclear application, and the, the uh, nuclear neighbor came out and essentially did a ship alteration that said, get rid of all of your soldered fuses and replace them all with with solid ends what was happening is, is the fuses would get hot the fuse wouldn't necessarily blow but it would get hot enough that that solder would start to melt and then you have dripping metal inside of an electrical uh, enclosure not a good idea so who knows how long they la that lasted but that was uh, that was something that I remember so like I said no reason not to reuse those this here is another uh, stabilizer of some sort. I don't quite remember where that what that is, but that goes on the uh, on the firewall. And then obviously this is the starter cylinder here. As far as I uh, as far as I'm concerned, again I'm going to try to use all the original stuff. So this here's the voltage regulator, that control box that I had mentioned. You see this screw it looks pretty new. So this has definitely been opened up and has been refurbished at some time. So there's a little sticker under here, and I, I'm pretty sure it says polarize. Dynamo ensure good connection something like that. So this was um, I don't think that sticker was original to the factory, but this is a remanufactured unit You can see in here it looks all nice and shiny and holy cow. That's all brand new Well, unfortunately there was some rattling in there and if you can see that portion right there That's all melted away. So at some point that little uh, that's a little spring arm there came in contact with that bus bar down there and stayed there forever and, and ate itself. So unfortunately, I won't be able to use this even though it uh, even though it looks brand new. You got the fuse box here. I'm gonna go ahead. I got the schematic. This uh, this mass of wires here is essentially what all goes into the fuse box. So I just uh, work my way around, put the right stuff in the right place. I'll be all set. One 
nice touch I like about this wiring harness too is it includes all of those little plastic sheaths that go over all the spade connectors. All right, so that's pins one and two. Now we'll do three and four. It looks like three's got a couple whites. Just a couple whites. Bunch of greens. One, two, three, four greens. All these greens. Wired up. Just simply uh, screw it up here. Get the other couple of components. Voltage stabilizer. This coil of wire here is the auxiliary. Harness, I think that's what it's called. This essentially runs to the back of the car. So all of these guys right here are what connect the main harness to this harness. And it runs down the floorboard in through this hole here, up the B post, and then back. What I'm going to do is I got some shot line here. I'm going to try to fish the shot line through first and get that out here. That way, one, I don't lose the wires, and two, when it comes all the way through, I'll pull this all the way through, tie the wire off to the back of the shot line on the other end, and then be able to pull that through and use it kind of as a, uh, as a guide or a tool so that I can get the wire through. All right, so the string's hanging in there. Grab a pair of needle nose to grab it. Alright, got that tied off. I'm going to wrap some tape around it, make like a little bullet out of it almost, just to help hold the rope on one, and two, just to prevent any chafing or anything of the wire as I get through there, and to kind of keep them all together so one doesn't get hung up. And you want your rope to come out in line with the way you want so that it tends to follow the curve a little, a little better. All right, just like that. So when the wire runs through here, it runs through this channel, down, up through this other channel, up into the floorboard, and up into the uh, wheel or the uh, footwell. There would be the little T-shaped wire clip things, but unfortunately, I never did get back around to, to putting them on the car, so I never never put them on. So I'll come up with something to to help just kind of hold the wire down a little bit. Got most of the stuff wired up. This uh, auxiliary harness back here. I don't. Uh, I don't remember this ground clip, but it's obviously there. And I looked at my old harness, and it is there. So I'm kind of assuming it goes to uh, the bumper support there. And check that out. The uh, that should be fine with just the bolt to tap ground. Now, if you notice on this tail light, you've got four wires. Three wires on this light down here. Four wires. This is the uh, license plate illumination. Now you're down to two wires, and now you're down to two wires. So what's going on here is that you need to maintain, these are wired up like Christmas tree lights. So you need to maintain the path for continuity and for current flow. So these are just brake lights and um, parking lights. So when you touch the brakes, the one wire comes in to light this light, and then the, the current will flow back out of that wire all the way over into this wire which will get the last light. This wire terminates inside this brake light, doesn't need to go anywhere else, so that's why there's only two wires down here. So if that's why uh, these wire numbers don't kind of be equal, same thing down here, you've got uh, the two parking lamps, two parking lamps here, but two of these are gonna get tied together to maintain pad for continuity, something like that, maybe these two. There's, uh, I still think there's a couple, uh, I don't know what these wires are for, brown and, brown and green and black, same thing here. 
the uh, I think the uh, some of the Mark II's also had reverse lamps as an option so that might be what that is I'll have to look into that but everything seemed to go pretty well and, and, and lined up and, and came together I got this the big heavy-duty rubber grommet on there but I'm not going to put it in yet this little guy here calls for a one inch uh, rubber grommet like like is over here with the with the um, what the heck's that thing called windshield wiper motor I have no idea how I'm going to get that grommet on that thing without just destroying it and I double checked uh, some old pictures I had and sure sure enough that's uh, those wires all come out of there so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that I'll take some pictures of my questions here and post them on my favorite form of course so I'm going to uh, continue to play around with this a little bit my only other thing that I think I have a mistake on or otherwise don't understand and I'm going to pull one of the harnesses out and see if I can find it is on the American cars down here like in your old Chevys and Buicks if you remember I remember them as a kid there's the high beam uh, button down there in the footwell. Well, I don't have any wires uh, on here for this. So then I got nervous and thought maybe I ordered the wrong wiring harness and ordered it for a British car. But no, I, I ordered the correct one. So I'm, like I said, I'm going to pull out the old harness there and see if I can trace this out and find where those are for uh, and how that works on that harness and then see if I have any uh, solutions or, or what. All right, wiring harness is routed. Not as bad as I thought. Still got some kinks to work out, some new grommets to get, but otherwise, looks great. So, next up, be wiring up and testing the components. Thanks for watching. Cheers.